Ah, yeah. Welcome in. Welcome back to another live episode of the Format Podcast. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Appreciate you joining. Appreciate you joining. Uh, Got a pretty interesting episode here today. Going to talk about some uh, pretty interesting topics, uh, mostly NBA. And then we're going to get to a little NFL at the end. Going to hit on this. um, Michael Jordan couldn't go left and we done with the 80s nonsense. Definitely going to talk about that. Going to talk about uh, Kevin Durant uh, passing uh, Shaquille O'Neal on the all time scoring list and where that has his legacy. I'm going to talk about this new Mind the Game podcast with LeBron James and uh, 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 man, what's my man's name? Uh, Dang, I totally forgot. But um, the Mind the Game podcast that LeBron James has um, with J.J. Reddick. There we go. And of course, we're going to talk about uh, Caleb Williams and uh, the fact that he's almost certainly the number one overall pick in the upcoming uh, NFL draft. But before we get to all that, you know what time it is. If you're here on YouTube and you haven't already, please make sure you go ahead, click that like, that subscribe, that notification bell. Make sure you're kept up to date whenever we drop new content on the channel. If you want the audio only version of the podcast, open up your audio podcast platform, hit the search bar, type in the format podcast, and we should come right up. If you're enjoying the content, make sure you give us that like, that five star review, and drop a comment. All that stuff helps us rise in the algorithm, helps us find more sports fans, helps more sports fans find us. And finally, make sure you write it down, put it in your phone, set an alarm. Do whatever you got to do to remember Saturday nights at 7 p.m. We are live here on the format podcast and we'll give you the opportunity to call in. But anyway, um, uh, yeah, th- th- this was a great topic. Um, we are going to uh, go ahead and move on to the final topic of the day. And this one is actually um, a football topic. We're going to talk a little bit of NFL. I know you also used to me and G um, kicking it on the hoop side, but we're going to talk a little bit of NFL because um Right now we are we're in the heat of the off season and we're getting towards uh we're getting towards the NFL draft and we're seeing a whole bunch of um we're seeing a whole bunch of trades and movement and we're seeing a whole bunch of positioning for the upcoming draft as we always do. And um so I think this is interesting because we're we're at a point now where it's kind of been established that well, Caleb Williams has been seen as the number one prospect overall for uh pretty much since last year when he won the Heisman Trophy. And um, uh, the Chicago Bears have it. And there was kind of some hold up, like, are the Bears actually considering keeping Justin Fields? Are they going to trade the pick, load up around him, blah, blah, blah. What are we looking at? But now Justin Fields is out of the way. He's been traded to the Steelers. Caleb Williams is um, there. So here's my thing, right? If if you're a college football fan, I definitely want to hear from you on this because I'm a huge college football fan. I I think it's an incredible sport and uh, it's, it's very interesting. So, um, here's my thing. Caleb Williams has been regarded, as I said, as the top prospect for the last couple of years. We hear him to talk about he's a generational talent. He's this, that, and the third. Now, I'm not going to be disrespectful with Caleb Williams. I'm not stupid. The guy has incredible talent, ridiculous talent. He can make plays off schedule, which is something that everybody is looking for from, from modern quarterbacks. He's got elite arm talent, whether in the pocket or on the move. Um, he's, he's very mobile, which again is something that you look for from modern quarterbacks. G and me notice, especially being Ravens fans and our guys, Lamar Jackson. Um, so Caleb Williams is definitely special, but when they talk about generational, I'm really wondering why is that? Why do they call Caleb Williams generational? And the reason I ask that is, is as good as he is, is he truly, um, does he, what does he do better than another guy who played in college for his uh, former head coach, Lincoln Riley, Kyler Murray? And I'm going to bring up some information here. So you can see it. Caleb Williams, he has had incredible numbers. Uh, he's very accurate, 67% completions for his career, 10,000 passing yards, career pass rating of 169, right? Incredible numbers. Then you look at Kyler Murray, who now he... He got to uh, Oklahoma and he had to sit behind Baker Mayfield, another Heisman Trophy winner under Lincoln Riley. But his best season was actually better than Caleb Williams' best season. He's more accurate. He's got a career higher, uh, a higher career passer rating. He's more mobile. He rushed for a thousand yards. He rushed for more yards in his Heisman Trophy season than Caleb Williams rushed for in his entire college career. They, they basically have the same arm talent. They can throw it on the move. They can throw it down the field. Kyler's got a cannon. Caleb Mer- uh, Caleb has a cannon. So my question would be, um, and G, feel free to weigh in on this. What do you, What is it about Caleb Williams that they love so much that they're saying is generational? 
what does he do better than Kyler Murray, furthermore being a generational talent and supposedly being the best since Andrew Luck? Hmm. Like you said before, he's, he's definitely um, he definitely has the skills to, to flourish in the, in the NFL. Uh, I, I was reading an article that uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, freaking um, RG3 wrote about mm-hmm. how it's going to take him three to four years to develop. Right, and then they should hire a coach that's willing to to put that time in, so he can develop and be that you know that generational uh, mm-hmm. talent that they're looking for. Uh, what we often see a lot of times is really really good quarterbacks get drafted to really bad teams, mm-hmm. and, and it stuns their growth, and you know, and then they become you know first round busts. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I, I I'm interested in seeing what what type of um, special if they play him first year or if they mm-hmm. give him time to rest. Um, some of the best quarterbacks. Nah, they're going to play him. Year. Yeah, 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 <laughs> they're going to play him. We had to get Justin Fields about it. They're going to play him. He, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't think the, the Chicago Bears fan base is happy. Um, I don't think so either. Think, yeah, yeah. I think they, they really, really like uh, Fields, Justin Fields. And to trade him like that, they feel like, you know, you say him like, what are y'all doing? Like, mm-hmm. um, but – you know, it's been years and years. Yeah. The Bears have been making really bad decisions at the quarterback mm-hmm. position. Mm-hmm. And so this is – I don't think this is nothing new. Um, but, hey, we just got to wait and see. Yeah. You know? So I think it's, uh, it's interesting, again, because, um, you know, the Chicago Bears, I believe, are the only NFL franchise that's never had a 4,000-yard passer, like, in franchise history. <laughs> so they have – and that's a big part of why um, – Robert Griffin third RG3 was hesitant about why he was saying that he believes Caleb should refuse to go to the Bears, i.e. pull an Eli Manning or, or John Elway and tell him, hey, don't draft me because they just have a terrible history with uh, developing quarterbacks, drafting and developing quarterbacks. And because their quarterback, Matt Eber- Eberflus, has not shown much in terms of developing quarterbacks in his time there. But um, they got a uh, former, I want to say... Rams, Seahawks, former Seahawks offensive coordinator Shane Waldron, Rams, um, either Rams or Seahawks, pardon me, I, I should have checked that before the show start, but either former Rams or Seahawks offensive coordinator Shane Waldron, and so they believe that the the system that he runs should be friendly to Caleb Williams, and again, nobody's trying to denigrate the talent, I just think it's so interesting how uh, so many of these um, so-called experts and pundits are so quick to throw the uh, generational label on these guys, and it's like, do you know how good you have to be to be generational? Like it, it doesn't make sense to me how quickly they want to throw that. Um, uh, one of the guys I, I talked to and a uh, former NFL scout with the jets, his name is Daniel Kelly. And uh, hopefully uh, I'll have him on the show uh, at some point here pretty soon. But um, he actually, he grades all these guys and believe it or not, he actually put a fourth round grade on Caleb Williams because he sees uh, a lot of issues. And one of the big issues that he sees is they always talk about in the NFL how quickly you need to be able to process and get rid of the football. And this past year in college, his average time to throw was 3.21 seconds. That would have made him second lowest in the NFL, i.e. Well, I should say second longest this past season in the NFL. And in the NFL, you just don't have time to hold the ball that long. Um, Secondly, uh, Daniel Kelly, I believe, says that uh, Caleb Williams kind of has nervous feet in the pocket. His his mechanics are a little off based on his uh, bad footwork in the pocket. And so these are things you got to be concerned about. Also, a lot of the highlight plays that he that he was able to pull off in college outside of structure, he's probably not going to be able to do that in the NFL because a lot of guys find out real quick that defenders in the NFL are real, real fast. It ain't like college and you're not going to be able to make fools out of these guys. Then you also heard, I don't know if you heard it the other day, um, uh, his future Bears teammate providing, of course, the Bears draft him. Uh, Jalen Johnson had some commentary to the effect of uh, he, he, we need to make sure that he ain't coming out here with all this Hollywood stuff. You need to come out here and do the work. And, you know, and so I don't know. Said, I mean, humble yourself. That's what yeah, you yeah. Humble yourself, yeah. young fella. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Caleb Williams, I, I don't know. Again, I, I, I can rant and rave like everybody else about his physical gifts and his talent and his ability. To me, the issue is between the ears. Like, I look at this dude and I'm like, one, like, you're a grown man and you're painting your fingernails with, you know, obscenities directed towards the opposing team. Like, that's weird. Like, if you want to direct obscenities at the opposing team, yell at him and curse at him. Do that. 
it's a football game. You know, that happens all the time. Why are you painting your fingernails with stuff? That's weird. <laughs> you know, second, you saw the game. Um, I can't remember who they played against, but um, uh, after they lost the game, he he jumped into the stands and he was in his mom's arms and he put the towel over his face and he was crying. And I'm like, you could look at that two ways. You could look at that and say, you know, he really cares and losing means a lot to him. But I've been watching the NFL probably since the late 80s. I've never seen anybody do that ever. I've never seen a quarterback do that. That looked weird to me, <laughs> you know. Maybe, maybe he has a real deep connection with his mom and respect due for that, you know. No problem there. I but stopped, that's, yeah, I stopped watching. <laughs> yeah, I stopped watching him after that. Yeah, yeah that's, that's just kind of weird, right? And then, but, you know, you also see when, when the games aren't going well or he's not playing well, he's kind of off off by himself on the on the sideline and not like – you know, he's not up there uh, bringing the troops together. And what, what does Stephen A. always say? Galvanizing the troops. He's, he's not that kind of guy. I think there's some leadership issues there. And for me, those are too many red flags at key areas in terms of I want to draft you number one overall, make you the face of my franchise and believe that you're the guy that's going to lead us in, into the future. Am I wrong there? Or, or where are you with that? That's the Bears. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose yeah. it is. Yeah, they develop a, a quarterback and then they they trade him. So mm -hmm. um, it's kind of weird. I I look forward to seeing him, you know, flourish in the mm -hmm. Bears' offense. Right? Like I only wish the best for the young kid. Um, mm -hmm. But the, the the NFL is unforgiving, and mm -hmm. you know, people playing for bonuses out there. Yes, they are. So yeah. There's no time. There's no time to cry. You mm -hmm. know, you need to scrap his helmet up and get out there and play. Um, Absolutely. I just he has some weapons. They they now have a, a pretty solid running game. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And, and so they got so Keenan Allen for him, DJ Moore. You got Cole Komet at tight end, and they could probably draft another receiver. I think they got to pick at number nine, number one, and number nine. So they could draft. It, it, and if it's me, I'm saying if he's still there, I'm grabbing Roman Dunze from Washington. I think that dude is a beast at wide receiver. He's actually, even though Marvin Harrison Jr. is widely regarded as the the best overall player in the draft. I think Roman Dunze is the best wide receiver in the draft. I could be crazy, but I really believe that based on what I saw. But yeah, they they um they are loading up. And I think Ryan Poles, the GM for the Bears, he's doing everything he can to, if they take Caleb, give him the best uh position to succeed. But um we'll see what he is. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So um I think we're gonna leave it there for the night. Um for everybody that tuned in. Thanks so much. Really appreciate you. I'm going to really uh, I'm going to get that phone situation worked out. I apologize. I couldn't take those calls. I don't know what was going on there. But um, yeah, uh, we'll be back with you next week, um, 7 p.m. Saturday night. Again, I appreciate you. Make sure you like and subscribe. Uh, check out the channel. Got tons of content on there and we're out. Peace.